Also, you have the, you'll notice the permits on the graph that the permits were up in 2010 and we're starting out 2011, but notice it's mostly new housing permits that we're dealing with. The days of having all the building permits, uh, the office building permits has dwindled significantly except for across the street where we have the ITC project. You know, <clears throat> the other point I want to make before I go on to the clerk's office, Don made a point about Selig Drive. And Selig Drive has been just one of those issues that just, it's like a bad sore, it won't go away. Now, the fact of the matter is, I explained to you how we're paying for it, but I think you also have to know that, that there, we're in court on the issue. And one of the mandates of that court uh, case is that if we, it's going to go be on the ballot in August, by the way. You're going to vote on it, believe it or not. Believe it or not. You're going to be at voting on whether to restore it to its original condition. And so the city will then be forced to go back and spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to restore it unless you vote it down or vote it to leave the project go forward. And here's the only problem I have. With. I have no problem. And I've told people that have come up and told me that they don't agree with what's going on there. And I tell them this. Two years ago, two years ago, 19, or 2009, the developer in the Cleveland Clinic came to the city of Independence and asked for an expansion. Two years ago, in the entire year of 19, in 2009, we worked with them, brought, made them bring in experts in terms of traffic management, experts in terms of the development, and they're going to house our biggest tenant, the Cleveland Clinic. They want to make sure that that tenant, those thousand employees that are coming, have good access in and out of this place, not for today, but for the next 15, 20, 30 years. They have a 16-year lease on that building. They're not walking away. Now, when the Planning Commission, the Zoning Board, all the commissions approved this project a year ago, a year ago, we had public hearings, we had debate, and that was decision was made to go forward. Five councilmen voted, five to two. We borrowed the money April of 2010. Do you understand the sequence here? Here's the issue. That's our customer. And you all know the importance of our customers to our lifeline, which is money, which is providing services. If people had a major objection or concern they had a time frame. This issue five that's coming down. They're going to get signatures and put it on the ballot. How long do they have time to get signatures? 90 days. We didn't hear about this thing being controversial or being uh, uh, people that wanted to fight it until the end of last year. You cannot run a city. You can't run your family that way. We can't run our city business that way. And a business, the business community cannot be treated that way. Because the next big customer that wants to come to our city, what are they going to say? Well, independence doesn't treat their business community right. This is wrong. Now, it's my opinion, but I truly believe that if the people were that much opposed to this project, they should have done something immediately after it was approved and then let the people know that's what the charter says. Tell us right away. Don't come back a year later. You can't buy a car and come back a year later and say, well, you know, I'm going to charge you more money for it or I don't like it, it's just wrong. You can't run the business that way. My point is this, you are gonna have a chance to correct this debacle because it's gonna go, we're gonna spend, the city is spending thousands of dollars to fight this. We're gonna spend 15, $20,000 for a special election. Yep, it's gonna keep going and the judge would not stop the project. He said, keep going. You're entitled to keep doing the project. We have a deadline. Those people are coming to Independence, whether we're done or not. So if somebody was that much opposed to it, they should have done something a long time ago. Let me give you an example. The building you sit in today, the building you sit in today failed three times before it was approved. I know, I was there. We didn't give up. We just kept coming back until you approved it. Now, I'll defy anyone to tell me they wouldn't vote for this today. So all I'm going to tell you is, trust our judgment. Five councilmen said yes. 
unanimous approval of planning commission, zoning board, everyone. So all I'm suggesting to you this time is have a vision for the future because it's a shame we have to fight ourselves to catch our tail when the real challenge is on the outside, trying to attract new business. And I'm hoping this doesn't have an effect on us long term. We'll fight through it like we always do because we're from independence. That being said, that's the issue that's going to be on the ballot this fall, and you'll get a lot of information between now and then. Now let's go to the clerk of courts. You know, people think that all Angela Zalesnik does and her team is just take and process tickets. That is absolutely the farthest thing from reality. I personally witness what Ange and her team does to help people on a daily basis. People that get DUIs, people that have drug offenses, people that have domestic situations, people that are struggling, that come before the court. It's not a cookie cutter. You're not just a number to her and her team. You are actually, she takes you in, she creates programs to get you back on track. I could not tell you how many parents and how many grandparents and how many people in this room have witnessed the work and the effort and the passion and compassion that Angie and her team puts into her job on a daily basis. And it's because of people like Angie and her team that care about others. That's what gives us our reputation. The Leader Within program is the latest program working with the school district that has been so successful, so successful helping young people get on track because as many of you know, it's a challenge out there. And so, Angela, I can't tell you enough and thank you and your team enough for your commitment to this community and to the people of all ages, young and old, and the people you've made, made better in their world and their life because of you. Thank you. How about a round of applause for Angie? <clears throat> <clears throat> now I gotta go to one of the old war horses, Ed Kostiak. Ed, where are you, Ed? Red, our, there he is. I suppose you want my mic. Well, I can tell you about Ed. Before Ed takes over, I want to tell you, Ed was here before the Civic Center, before the field house, before the upgraded outdoor pool, before the upgraded baseball diamonds, before we took over responsibility of all the baseball parks. Ed has been part of that entire growing process. Ed Costia. Thank you, Mayor. Good morning, fellow residents and senior citizens. I'm a senior now. When Greg said I had a talk today, I was in my office and I was thinking, what am I going to talk about? Programs? Well, I could talk to you about programs, but you can read that in our, in our spotlight. So I was sitting at my desk and I looked out the window and I saw people walking into the Civic Center. And I said, oh, that's, that's what this is all about. I came in on Saturday and I walked around and I looked at the, the pool and we had our water babies class going on. I saw the young mothers coming in with the kids and in the water having fun with their children. And I go, well, that's, that's what this place is all about. And then we had the preschool learn to swim going on and I saw all them kids coming in the building. You know, break your heart when you see these little rugrats come in. They come in the building, they're running in front of their parents, and they run right into the pool. I said, where are you going? Swimming, swimming, they yell. I go, oh, this is really good. And we put that new uh, family changing room in, and that's where they, these kids know where to go, change their clothes, and get into the pool. And this is what this place is all about, okay? I, and I walk around the building during the day, and I talk to the people up in, up in the weight room, working on machines, getting their exercises in, and... Uh, come downstairs in the mornings, come over here to get a cup of coffee every morning. I see the seniors sitting there talking, socializing. I see them playing cards. I see them playing bingo. And it's, it's, it's just unbelievable. I think to myself, what would this, what would we be in this city without the recreation, the Civic Center? And I'm thinking, well, I think the Civic Center is the hub of our community. Okay, because all the programs come out of here. Okay, uh, socialization, exercise, 
look at look at today. Everybody's here. What would we be without this without the Civic Center? The Civic Center is the hub of this community. I think about 18, it was 1989 when we passed, went on the ballot, and we finally won. We just squeaked it out. Okay, I thank council for that. I thank the mayor, okay, and he's the man that had the vision. He talked about vision before. He took a lot of my thunder away when he said that, but that's okay. He's been taking a beating lately, but he's the one that built this building, okay? It was his vision. That, that's why we're sitting here today. That's why we have the activities we have. That's why we have everything in this building. We have our socialization. We have exercise and camaraderie with everybody else, all the seniors, okay? And I think this man de deserves an applause. And you're a friend too, Mr. Thank you. I'm done? You're done. Thank you, Ed. Geez, I'm blushing now. That wasn't scripted, but I, Ed, I do appreciate it. One thing you know about Ed, you're not going to get a lot of smiles out of him, but you will get the job done. And he does that. You got hundreds and hundreds of young kids getting ready to fire up on the, on the baseball diamonds. And Ed, you're going to fire up the pool at when? Memorial weekend? If we get any sun, right? Well, here, by golly, you got to take care of that. We got uh, Tom Alchanowitz. He's our facility coordinator. He's sitting over there. Tom, if you take a look at the building when you walked in today, you saw the nice flowers, the mulch all put down. That's Tom, okay? That's his idea. He coordinates all the buildings. He makes sure they're all running. The swimming pools are running. And we got a gentleman over here, Tony Appenzeller. He's, he runs the park maintenance crew. If you read the paper the past week, in the, in the sports section, they complimented us because Independence has played about 16 baseball games and other cities have only played three. Yesterday, Independence lost to Cuyahoga Heights, but they beat them on Tuesday or Monday. But we had our field fixed, okay? Cuyahoga Heights couldn't fix their field, so they came here and played, and we fixed it for them. And you can thank this gentleman and his crew that got it ready. All right? Got Bill Furman, manager of the field house. Okay, the field house is uh, six years old, five years old, really. Uh, we took in over $220,000 at the field house over those years on different on tournaments. Uh, we have Jim Macniak, one of our supervisors. Works up in the weight room, works at the Civic Center, works at the field house. Ex-principal, he knows how to work with kids. On Friday nights, we have our, uh, our activities for the kids, okay? It gets loud, but we run dodgeball, volleyball, basketball, and Tommy puts the inflatables up, and we've been doing it for about 15 years, and we haven't lost a kid yet, okay? <laughs> And I'd rather see the kids here, here in the Civic Center, than out on the streets. And that's what this place was built for. And I'm adamant on that. And I have other staff. I have Cindy Ridgeway. She's my administrative assistant. She runs the front desk. April Lemke, she's aquatics manager. She puts all the uh, uh, swimming lessons together. Swim, and then she also certifies all our staff in first aid and ADA. And then I have uh, Dimitri Dimitrik. He's our youth program coordinator. And this year we have 37 little league teams. We have uh, 13 travel teams. We have a total of 635 kids playing summer baseball. 